Today's episode will be exciting. We will go on an exotic trip to Africa back to 1967. Ten years before ABBA made their first and only feature film together, Benny was trying to make a film with his first band before ABBA, the Hepstars. This turned out to be quite a disaster. Why did it fail and what happened to this film? It is one of the most fascinating chapters in our ongoing exploration of the ABBA members in movies. An adventure with some fascinating connections. Hey, hey. So, when we explore the movies with Agneta and Frida, we noticed that those films don't really have musical contributions from the ladies. They are dramatic narrations with focus on acting. Benny's African film is special for several reasons. For one thing, like Abba the movie, this was an actual musical film with songs and performances by Benny and his band. For another thing, however, I should say it would have been a musical film. The movie was shot, conceived and planned to be released, but eventually Habari Safari was aborted and abandoned. The movie was never finished and remains unreleased. The background story for all of that is very intriguing. In 1967, Benny's band The Hapstars was one of Sweden's most successful and celebrated rock bands. By that point, they had released two studio albums and one live album, which was ranked by an American rock journalist as one of the best live albums ever. The Hapstars were now about to make their first feature film. The inspiration came from several circumstances. It was inspired by the two musical films from The Beatles, A Hard Day's Night and Help and also by the Hapstars' second album. Simply titled The Hapstars, it was released in December 1966. For this album, three music videos were made. Those videos set the foundation to create a feature-length film. The videos were shot in black and white and were meant to make up a third of the film, framed by new sequences in color. This had to happen on an exotic location. Early plans included South America, Mallorca or the Canary Islands. In February 1967, the Hapstars finally traveled to Nairobi, the capital city of Kenya in Africa, to shoot the main scenes for Habari Safari for two weeks. The film was directed by Orke Borglund. He also directed the three music videos in black and white. And he was responsible for the film's cinematography as well as the screenplay. As we can see, the team for this film was kept as small as possible. This would turn out to be fatal and one of the reasons for all the chaos that would soon arise. But the actual story and concept of the film seemed to be charming and quite clever. The Hapstars had an advertising deal with the producer of a British puppet, the fluffy Klug doll. The band was supposed to establish the doll in Sweden. With their film, they somewhat tried to kill two birds with one stone. The plot was that the Hapstars would travel to the mysterious land of the Klugs to search for the original Klug, in whose left eye the great secret was supposedly hidden. Originally, the ending of the movie was a surreal sequence where the Hapstars were chased down into a muddy puddle and reappeared in a swimming pool in Stockholm. Additional filming took place in Copenhagen, Denmark, in the fields of Uppsala, Sweden, which supposedly looked like the African desert, and in Stockholm for a revised ending sequence. According to the director, there was a 600-page manuscript for the film. However, lead singer Svenne Hedlund said that there was hardly any script at all and that it was jotted down at the airport and on the plane. An article from the time reported that the screenplay was written while the film was being made. And that is always a bad sign for the fate of a movie. But what exactly led to a complete collapse of this exotic cinematic adventure? It starts with the intention of the whole project. The filming was described as chaotic. This is confirmed by the various memories of people involved which are all completely different to each other. Some members of the Hapstars thought that the main reason to go to Africa was to have a holiday. Most of the time they were seen swimming and soaking up the sun. In complete contrast, however, lead singer Svenne said we had to work our asses off from morning to night every single day. As we noticed, the movie would have needed more crew members to result in anything. In addition to that, the filming also led to confused meetings between the group and local inhabitants. It didn't get easier with post-production. The footage turned out to be incoherent, no story could be found, the blot was described as insensible. 
the editing turned out to be impossible and didn't result in a consistent, watchable film. At one point, a young filmmaker was consulted. His name was Lasse Hallström, the future director of ABBA's music videos and ABBA the movie. Lasse Hallström tried to rescue Habari Safari in post-production, but even he could not make any sense of it and failed. The film was supposed to be ready in the summer of 1967, then postponed to autumn and eventually shelved and never released. In 2004, a documentary on Swedish TV showed for the very first time original film footage, even with sound and songs, reconstructing the troubled production of a failed movie. The only thing that really came out of this film was the next single from the Hapstars from April 1967, two of my personal favorite songs. Malaika and It's Nice to Be Back. The film story would have been mixed with music, mainly by the Hapstars, but even from other groups as well. Beside the three songs from the Hapstars' second album, these two brand new songs would have been featured. Benny's own composition It's Nice to Be Back would have been the closing song for the revised end sequence, where the Hapstars return to Stockholm on a ship. In 1971, this song was recorded in Swedish by an artist called Frida produced by Benny and became Frida's first number one hit on the Swedish charts. The second new song would have been the African folk song Malaika, a song that the Hapstars only happened to hear on their stay in Africa when it was played by local people at their hotel. Malaika became another number one hit for the group for five weeks. In 2015, Benny returned to movie production. Together with his son Ludwig, he produced the fantasy film Circle. In one of the scenes, Malaika is played on the radio. So with this film, the African song from the Hapstars finally made it into a movie. These ballad-type songs also show the musical development of the Hapstars at the time, who started out as a rock and roll band and continued to explore different styles, including pop, folk and baroque pop, with more focus on their harmonies. Who knows where Benny and the group would have been if the movie had been finished and released in 1967. Ten years later, Benny would finally be successful with his next movie project, a film about the Australian adventures of his new band, ABBA the Movie. I hope you enjoyed today's trip to the movies, to Africa in 1967, and the connections to Benny and his future in the music business. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Alright, until then, hey do!